Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the AVA Direct live stream. I'm Shannon. I'm Joe. And thank you for joining us here again. Uh, we actually have uh, a ton of stuff to talk about after uh, my system decided to blue screen on us. So, you know, we're having some good, might, good some, times. Some might say too many things, but we'll try to squeeze it on in there. And so just as, in case you didn't know, we have a full, we have a schedule. So every Friday, you're going to be joining us here around uh, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Punctually. Ar around there. Just about as punctual as we can be. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> As best as we can. Things happen <laughs> outside of our control. So first thing, first thing on our agenda, we really wanted to kind of uh, talk about some cool tech topics. We're not going to be diving into any specific hardware this week. We have a lot of tech topics we want to cover. One of them being uh, Spectre. The final patches have finally come through. Everything's been patched up. And Intel, AMD, everything's come through. The new Windows patches have come through. And it's taken one hell of a hit with some storage performance. Uh, I was discussing it with Joe earlier. On regular NAND-based drives, we're seeing anywhere up to, and we've even verified it with third parties to make sure, they're yes. seeing the same thing. And on NAND-based flash, like regular you know, 960 Evo, 960 Pro, SATA drives, things like that, you can see performance hits of up to 40% on your, uh, on your low Q depth performance. Keyword, and, up to. <laughs> up to. Up so to. You're not guaranteed to see that, but... It does kind of suck when you look at it, especially things like we just recently were talking about Optane last week, and Optane has amazing performance. But once you upgrade, once you do this patch, it can hit Optane 3D crosspoint based SSDs up to 50%. Once again, up to, but that's like a worst case scenario. Just like, for instance, a lot of people were worried about the overall system performance degradation, like uh, hits to CPU performance. We haven't seen that except on some very specific, like enterprise level cloud-based applications, things like that. Virtual machines. Where you could really see some problems. Shannon is my hero. Well, thank you, John. <laughs> John, you're our hero. Thank you for joining us. You're the hero of the day. Oh, God, Joe. So now how do you feel about the, what, do you think, I mean, with, with Spectre, we know, we've known about it for a while, and they were mm. talking about patches yeah. coming through, and it's taken a long time for everything to finally roll out. Yes, it does affect some performance. SSDs are still going to be snappy as hell. Mm. But how do you feel about the fact that there was so many like side, side channel issues that apparently now just nuke performance is a way to enhance security on something we haven't seen any actual exploits come out yet? I mean, I've, I've heard a couple of things from some of the clients I work with, like, like real security issues that are mission critical to them to get fixed. So I have to applaud Intel for for putting the attention that needs to be there to fix these issues. I feel like for consumers, they maybe could have figured out a better way to handle it other than imposing some sort of performance loss to it. But again, I'm not an engineer. I don't, I've never built or, and fabbed a processor myself, but it, I mean, it, it sucks for, I mean, for lack of a better, more appropriate term, it does suck. Well, yeah, it's just, I mean, basically they found small exploits in the way like the lithography or the way the processor is laid out, the way it performs, right. things they probably discovered that make it a little faster going through a specific uh, path or something like that. I have, honestly, I don't even necessarily have all the access as to what would cause this as far as the overall topology of the CPU or how it communicates that causes this vulnerability. And I'm kind of glad I don't because I really don't want to know how badly compromised we were for who knows how long. Yeah, that, that's not a rabbit hole you want to dive head first down. Maybe if you slip and your ankle goes into it, you pull yourself right out and just keep walking. But at this point, no, I, I don't. <laughs> These questions are going to devolve pretty quickly, I can already tell. Sorry, not sorry. So basically, storage performance is going to take a hit. So one thing to keep note, guys, is if you have a 960 Pro, 960 Evo, or even like an Optane-based SSD, or pretty much most storage... If you're trying to benchmark and show like some of you see in your favorite reviews, like you may see 3,500 megabytes per second plus or something like that in your sequential performance, just understand if you see a small, uh, a small downtick or even a sizable, down, uh, sizable step down, some storage editors, which I've talked to, some of them are upgrading or in the process of or even doing pre and post testing. So do keep in mind that if you have a new system fully patched, fully updated, newest BIOS flashed, there's a chance you might see slightly lower performance, and that's okay. It's not going to affect your overall, you know, usability. It just might be that you might not be able to hit that exact theoretical number that everyone else could pre-patch. But I think it's better to have your system safe than to be able to hit one awesome storage number that you might never use. Agreed. Even if this were something that wasn't an issue, and, you, and a lot of us as consumers were presented with the opportunity to have added security for a loss of performance, I feel like that's something quite a few people would be willing to to, to exchange in the trade-off, especially when you have people that knowingly use antivirus software or 
uh, firewall software that already we know comes with some sort of a CPU performance to it. So. And see, this is the thing, when uh, you look at it, like back in the day, remember we used to never update, like Windows 7. I remember I'd be gaming and I'd be like, no. I don't want anything to screw my system up. No. Now it's become such a tipping point because so many people have access and so many people are doing unfortunately malicious things. Right. It's really good to keep your system up to date to make sure that stuff doesn't go sideways. Absolutely. How however, just to segue away from this because something came up, I wasn't able to add to our notes, but uh, they did recently find out a patch, I'm sure you saw, a Windows update that was now has to be blocked because it was actually like, I don't want to say bricking, but it was causing huge issues oh, with Intel-based SSDs. Good. Top stuff, Intel. Thanks. <laughs> I think that was Microsoft more than Intel. Same thing anymore. <laughs> well, they're all probably the same thing. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take a look real quick. There's actually quite a few questions. Uh, the amount of performance hit, does it make the patch actually worth it? Yes, it does make it actually worth it, Tufu. This is something where... Tufu! Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. Is there any way to utilize multiple M2 drives in one PC? Absolutely. Uh, and most most uh, most motherboards now come with multiple M2 uh, multiple M2 slots. I mean, all the X470s we've looked at thus far. Some of them three and four even. It's crazy. And now they have add-in cards, so you could even use your PCIe slots if you have spare and your which, spare lanes available. Which is brilliant, by the way. Well, it's awesome because it just unlocks a lot of uh, a lot of low Q depth, a lot of high IOPS performance, and PCIe-based storage is obviously the future, and it is here now. I hate to use that because that sounds so weird, but that sounds so cliche. It's like, it's the future and it's here now. The it's future, the future is now. It is the future and the future is now. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, other than that, um, now, unfortunately, we're going to talk about another Spectre pro uh, because, you know, Spectre NG, next generation, you know, because once was not fun enough, apparently. Second probably won't be either, and the third time is a charm. Oh, well, you know, they're just finding more and more wonderful security holes. And this one, unfortunately, <laughs> so far has been reported it's only going to hit Intel. But, you know, just like anything else, they're going to find more and more and more and more. So as that goes on, basically total of at least eight new security, what they call flaws or designs. Basically, I don't know what you want to call it. Flaws, designs, they're all one and the same at this point. Um, basically, they found issues baked into the uh, overall design. And it's going to be uh, even more, this could even be worse than the original ones because, it, um, as you know, Intel has uh, SGX, which is software, uh, software, um, software Execution Guard, or however they say it. Basically, the SGX software that's built for security and to keep everything from being vulnerable is kind of uh, just got screwed by the Spectre NG. So now, not only could you get through like a secure server with VMs, but potentially you can even access the VMs within the VMs. So, you know, like VMception, we can, we now have Spectreception. <laughs> VMception, it's a VM within a VM within a VM. But does time pass differently when you go multiple VMs deep? I mean, only if you go backwards and then forwards and sometimes diagonal. Well, if you, if you affect the way the real-time clock works on a system, you can screw with benchmarks. Really? So what you're saying is if I benchmark inside a VM, a VM, a VM, I might get like an either amazing or a really horrible store. You could, you could benchmark within the VM of the benchmark that's VMing within the benchmark of VMing and then before you know it, you can't get back in time because you don't have a flux capacitor anymore. This, <laughs> this makes me think of MUVR where I just, I, I do the PCI pass through and I think if I pass the PCI pass through to VM, can I now inside that VM PCI pass through to the next VM? And basically have like <laughs> have like PUBG running on one VM, and then inside that VM another VM of PUBG running, and just literally run down a chain and watch the graphics card explode. It's just a PCIe pass through loop. By the way, a VM of a PCIe. Speaking of PUBG, loop. I found a what I consider a somewhat horrible and horrid VR iteration. What's it called again? Uh, I don't know. Wanna be PUBG something? I, I sent it to you, so you'll have to look that up. I, I gotta look it up. It's uh, we need to talk about this. This is important. This is as important as Spectre. This is yeah. It's almost as important as Spectre is the fact that me and Joe love PUBG, so we will be streaming on the AVA channel coming up here pretty soon. Uh, we'll be streaming. Probably stand this. out. Stand out. It's called Stand Out VR. And we're going to play this because when we watched the video, it looked like a horrible life choice. So we're going to do that because we think it'll be fun to watch us do really stupid things. Um, let's see. I have and one nauseous, and most likely. Uh, but that's that's me. I mean, when I got when I got my Oculus, it was like, nope. What? And now I now I, now I'm doing. I play with a Vive and see if uh, my head doesn't explode. You also only play with two sensors though, and I urged you to get a third one, and you were just. No, I, I already know. returned it. <laughs> <laughs> it's already back at the store, so it doesn't matter to me anymore. Let's see. I only have one M2, so I would just use a PCI. Uh, yeah, if you, if you have an M2 that is PCIe, you could actually get a PCIe add-in card like the uh, 
Asus Hyper M2 X3, I believe it is. Uh, basically, there's plenty of people uh, that make cards that you can just plug into a slot and it'll adapt to an M2 if you actually have a, um, M2, or a PCIe M2. If it's a SATA M2, then you can pretty much run it in uh, any any SATA capable slot. But if that's yeah. a if it is a SATA M2, you would also have to have a specialized card that goes in PCIe that would have a SATA plug in it. That probably wouldn't be worth your time. Yeah, at that it's point. a SATA SATA M.2 really doesn't have merit anymore because the focus of M.2 used to be portability. Now it's it's more or less performance over anything. So well, if you're going to go with SATA in, in any facet, just go with the traditional SATA, two and a half inch, three and a half inch. I guess it is. I guess my question to John would be, uh, what kind of M.2 do you have now? Because maybe the M.2 popular in your slot is a SATA. Yeah. A lot of people did that and don't realize that you know not all of them are NVMe. So True. it carries both. Yeah, and if you're using it in a PC that has a ton of storage and you're saturating a lot of the SATA ports already, if you most M.2 slots, when you use them under a SATA bus, it disables a lot of those SATA ports. And it used to when there was SATA Express. So I think for me, the reason why M.2 PCI Express makes the most sense because it disables a lot of the PCI Express 1 slots that people don't really use anyway. I'm sorry, did you just mention SATA Express? I did mention SATA Express. That, that makes me sad inside. Um, that like died I, before it ever started. I was self-conscious bringing that up, and now you've just confirmed that I shouldn't even have said anything at all. Dude, you just, it, you, well you realize like one, I saw one hard drive come out and I'm like, yes, this is gonna be a thing. And then it just never went anywhere. I, I got one to test and then sent it back and said, thanks, no thanks. And now we have U2, which no one, wait, not, we're not talking Bono U2, we're talking U2 no. connection, U.2. And <laughs> probably the same usability, to be honest, because no one uses that damn thing either. Right. Except they use the same <laughs> connector on a, on a RAID card, so I guess there, there's usage. It's just not on most motherboards, because I have yet to see anyone use them. I mean, meh. Is I've, I mean, I've used a few of them for enterprise solutions, because a lot of like the big box server manufacturers, they have U2 ports that are, they almost force you to use them in a way, because you have no other choice. Well, yeah, they have the breakout cables that go to the backplane, so that right. makes sense. But if you're talking like consumer motherboard, my motherboard has one. I haven't even thought about hooking one up. No, I forgot mine even had one, to be honest with you. I even thought about ripping it off because it was getting in the way of some of my cable management. Tufu said, uh, Daisy Chain Pub Jesus. Pub, pub <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> It's like the second coming of Pub Jesus. Well, that's going to be, we're going to, I think back to back. We're going to have to, we're going to stream on AVS channel, regular PUBG, so you can see how bad I am and how good Joe can carry me. Mm. And then we'll play VR PUBG together as a first time ever in front of you guys, because then maybe I'll actually be able to hold my own at least somewhat decent compared to Joe. Yeah, I, I hope. I kind of feel like, though, there needs to be a premise to us playing PUBG, because everybody's streaming PUBG nowadays, so there's really nothing special about it. I'm certainly not the greatest player. Um, Shannon and I often think that one of us between the two of us is, is a much better player than we're willing to admit it's ourselves. So I kind of feel like there needs to be a premise to it. So why don't you guys tell us in comments uh, what stipulations you think should be put in place. Should we play with pans only? Should it oh, be grenades? God. Should it be passive? Don't leave it up to these guys. No, I'm going Please, to leave it up no. to these Do we have to? Because we're, I feel like one of us is going to come up with something that's just not going to make sense a whole lot because... You know, we, we have somebody here at the office that he likes to play with a group of his friends. He calls it Road Warriors. And all it is is everybody drives a vehicle and it's oh, a shotgun. Sean. You can only use shotguns, yes. <laughs> Hats off to Sean for creating Road Warriors. But that's a real thing. I've tried it. I ended up shooting out my own tires and then drowning myself in a lake. So, Well, so far, Tufu says no pants. No so. pants. But everybody, everybody in PUBG plays with no pants most that's of the time. That's kind of true. It's either they're not wearing pants or you have people screaming at each other in the lobby to give them their pants. And now, and now Jimmy says, pants only, no character clothing. Uh, I mean, fine. Great. Okay. Um, by the way, thanks. Hey, welcome to the welcome to the stream, uh, Jason. And uh, awesome to see you because he's one of the PDX line guys. Oh, what's up, Jason? Mr. Mr. Marshall. How you doing? Uh, the inventor of wireless power. And I'll explain that later because that's a whole other story that's very interesting. Oh. And uh, let's see. VR Hearthstone or Bust? Dude, I can't play Hearthstone regular. I want to play VR Uno. Switch! <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea how Uno even works. Here's a card with a color. I, I mean, if know. we're going to play anything that's a VR card game, it's got to be the, the Pokemon trading card game. It's something's got to Is there take. a VR Pokemon trading card No, game? but there was the Game Boy version. Did you ever play the Game Boy version? I played Virtual Boy, and I swear I was going to go blind. Yeah, Remember no, that thing that they did the red lasers? Nobody talks about Virtual Boy, and the Angry Video Game Nerd did a really awesome video about that that I really don't <laughs> want to reference because it's not appropriate. But um, it, What do we do here that's appropriate? I mean, this channel has so far been built on us saying stupid things. I mean, your song from Seal earlier <laughs> about, about HTC Vive. I was just trying to communicate my frustrations in a fun, entertaining, and lighthearted manner. Sorry, HTC, didn't really mean anything by it, but that's my own personal opinion to stuff. It's $800 for a headset, come on. 
Yeah, they had to see this coming. They had to. There, nobody in their right mind would look at a product and go, $800 just for the headset? Seems legit. Push it. And, and my guess is it's probably leading into something. And what they wanted to do is give people kind of like an early adoption status. Like, yeah. we're not ready to go to press with this stuff yet, so let's at least go with a headset. If you want to get the headset, it's $800. It is what it is. Later on, we'll come out with a full kit, and then things will fall into place. I think what it comes, I think honestly what it comes down to is just like, in just like anything else we've seen happen in tech, once you get that hype train built up, everyone believes like, you know, HTC is the best, HTC is the one that's going to drive everything. So they're like, hey, we've got this new pro, it's 73 or 70, whatever percent higher resolution, great. But here you go, we're going to sell you this. And everyone's like, hell yeah, you know, 800 bucks, I'll buy it. And then they're like, wait, this is a headset only. Holy shit. Like, so, where's everything else? Some people just want to throw money at things because they can't. I've certainly been in a, in a position like that myself uh, with various other things. And, and everybody, yeah, everybody <laughs> just wants to, to dollar rain it when it comes to certain things and to each his own. For me, it's just not a VR headset. It's usually like displays and keyboard mouse peripherals. What's up, Brian? Brian Carter, Mr. Uh, Boddicker himself. And, uh, okay, we've got uh, more fun, uh, unfortunate things to talk about because apparently this all is going to be humdrum like sadness, uh, our first few topics. Yeah. Octane 900P, I know we had a lot of wah, really cool... Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I know we had a lot of cool stuff to say about it. Awesome performance, all that cool stuff. Well, we ran into some bugs as we've been doing all of our testing, so yay for R&D. We started finding out that it was very selective about what slots it decided it wanted to work in. It decided when it wanted to work, when it didn't want to, especially from board to board. Uh, Super good, convenient. Good example was on uh, AMD X470, which, I, by the way, we are working with Intel and AMD, Asus, all these guys, to try to make sure that this is as available as possible since we do offer Optane drives here. We do test, pre-test them before ever even, assemb ever even assembling them, which is one of the reasons we're doing the R&D here to test it. And we found a lot of weird issues, even on Z370, where specific drives, like for instance, an Ivo, good example, Joe, Maximus, Maximus X uh, formula, mm. plugged it into the second slot, CPU lanes, didn't show up on the 900P. Plug in the Intel 750 drive, shows up fine. Plug in the 905P, shows up fine. What the hell's going on? So then we go and plug it into the chipset slot, works fine. Then I plug it into a different Z370 board, it works great. Certainly not the first time we've seen things like this from device manufacturers. If you remember back in the day, there was that similar problem with uh, the GTX 280 cards and certain oh. boards. I mean, and I'm not. I'm, this is this is post like Enforce motherboards when SLI and Crossfire had to be have embedded chips on the board for in order, in order for it to support oh. SLI and Crossfire. <laughs> Do you remember when they had little like cards you had to just plug in to make it work? No, that was like back in the A-bit days, if I remember correctly. No, I, I was apparently too young for that, so I, I don't remember. I, but I'm I, like five years older than you. Yeah, Come no, on. Just, or either that or it just went right over my head, but I, I remember those days. Well, and that's that's not the only thing. <laughs> that kind of be that used to be. <laughs> kind of the expectation with, with boards. I think, I, I almost feel like that even though, yes, it does suck that you have things like Intel Optane devices not working in certain PCI Express card slots, but I always kind of brought back to the fact that PC hardware was never guaranteed to work perfectly with everything, and it was all still somewhat experimental. But plug and play, Joe. Plug and play. Oh, come on. Before we had plug and play, it was mm. USB. We, you had PS2, or you had to reboot a PC if you plugged in a keyboard halfway into Windows just for it to work. I mean... That's, that's just me. Maybe I'm, I'm biased in that regard, that I'm, I'm, I'm still reminded of the day and age when PCs were not very user-friendly. It was, if you want to use this PC, get with it, essentially. Oh, do, you you remember, no do you remember having to set, like, IRQs and everything for your products? You're like, oh, I'm out of addresses. Can't, <laughs> eat, can't add anything else. Wrong address. IRQ conflict. Blue screen. Blah. Yeah, I remember. And you're like, I had that set separately. No, <laughs> Windows decided it's going to do its own thing. Thanks, Windows 3.1. Yeah, I remember, com I remember com yes, ports when you used to have I to plug... I game used pads. DOS. When you, when you used to have to plug game pads into COM ports, and, and then they separated that and it had its own game pad port, and then when you have external sound devices or mice that had to use COM ports, <laughs> what about, that was a mess. What about this, like the Sound Blaster cards? It had like the joystick port on it. Oh, yeah, I remember. How my, useless was that? Well, actually, my was bro oh, God. My brother had one. He, he waited in line for like three hours at, um, at a Windows-based PC store in a mall close to us just to get one of those cards, and it was like, the sweetest thing ever. And then I remember he had it for like a good six months and then it died. And those things were not cheap oh, no. in, any, in any facet whatsoever. So I, I don't know if maybe he had to work with the manufacturer to get a replacement or maybe if he worked with somebody on BBS. You remember BBS? The DOS-based bulletin board system? Yes, I, like, I remember I remember old dial-up BBSs. <laughs> 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 I 
Thank you for the internet AOL. Thank yeah. you for taking three and a half hours to download one song. Yeah, I know. That, that Hashtag was, Napster. That was I mean, before wait. the days of Napster, and I was like, sweet, I downloaded Enter Sandman, and it only took two days. The quality is so outstanding, 92 kilobits. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, all the days when you used to give your PCs herpes and stuff. I remember that. <laughs> you used to download something like, oh, cool, I can get this free. Yeah, but you're going to reload your OS. Cool. Now you're going to corrupt everything, and you're going to go to boot up, and half of your programs are missing, your icons are in place. And then your mom yelled at it. you because she's got to do the taxes. <laughs> I've got to do the taxes. We're due tomorrow. Well, the computer broke. See, well, I have my own PC, so I didn't really have to worry about that, but I did monopolize the internet enough to where there were, there were times my mom would pull the plug right out of the wall while I was in the middle of uh, being online. Um, but I, the weird stuff I used to get myself into is you never thought that one day you boot up your PC and everything was Minesweeper. Oh my God. But, you know, I guess if you work hard enough at anything, you can accomplish I, your dreams of having a spider, Minesweeper only PC. Spider Solitaire, just saying. Spider Solitaire, never got into it. Neither did I. No. It was just one of those things that always came in Windows. I kind of dodged that experience, I guess. <laughs> oh, LimeWire, Gordon brought up LimeWire, yeah. Uh, you, you might as well just call it AidsWire at that point. Because yeah. For you to be able to download anything safely at that point, it was hit or miss. Well, Tufu also brought up the point that, you know, uh, what we call it, internally, we actually call it USB superposition. Yeah. You go to plug in a USB drive, won't fit. Plug it in the other way, won't fit. Turn it over again, plugs in. Yeah. And that comes down to that joke. I, I don't know if you saw this one online where, the, where they said that when the, when the gentleman who invented USB, Universal Serial Bus, when he finally, mm -hmm. when he, when he finally passes... They're gonna take, lower him in, and then pick him up, flip him over, and lower him back yeah, in. Se several times and then until he fits neatly in place. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's a maraca all of a sudden. I don't know. Yeah, he could be. <laughs> That's okay. We're just joking about like shaking up dead people's bones. I'm not sure if that's uh, it's, appropriate. It, it, it's 2018. It's passe. <laughs> No, but have you seen the USBs though that, that are unidirectional essentially, where you can plug it in any way and they fit? Yeah, you're talking like Type C. Yeah. Well, no, not, no, I'm not talking about. Type Are you C. talking the little plastic ones yes. that have connectors on both sides? Yeah, the, the connector was in the inside. Remember, you brought it to me, and you were like, "Uh, yeah, that's uh, ingenious. It, it's broken, but it fits both ways. I don't know if this is natural. <laughs> like, if it works, if it fits, it suits." Well, I remember the one of the first times I ever saw one of those ones that like didn't have a metal shell. It was actually when I had gotten a WD. It was a WD Black Squared Drive. And it was something wow. where they tried this hybrid. No, no, it was something, it was actually relatively recent. They had this little hybrid thing where it had like 120 gig SSD built onto a hard drive and it plugged in SATA. Wow. And the drivers for it had to have software to make, so you could split the partitions. Wow. And it had this little thing and only one side had, had it keyed and it broke the first time I tried to plug it in. Of course it did. And I'm like, great. Why, why would any other experience be any different for you? <laughs> it's apparently just like when I went to start, right before the live stream, I'm like, hey, cool things. The next thing you know, it's like blue screen. I'm like, <laughs> Well, well it's, apparently this is going to happen. Well, it started with your PC having a stroke. Like, the mouse pad would work. <laughs> of course, half of the functionality was there, and the other half was just non-existent. I'm like, come on, Windows, don't just, do this. And just as I was getting ready to say, I hope it doesn't boo it, it blue screens. Your watch is saying you need a torso twist. I need a torso twist? <laughs> ah! Mind, don't mind me. <laughs> He's going to freaking smash me. Just, just get see. this. Don't, just keep doing your thing. Just keep doing so your Gordon thing. apparently okay. loves PC STDs, so... Uh, he's all about he's all about that life of you know giving up his uh, giving up all of his personal information to a Nigerian prince because you know he has billions of dollars for you Joe billions of dollars for for really where yeah the Nigerian prince you know those emails you get oh all the time yeah the last time I gave him money though I didn't get anything but then I got people calling me did you get a thank me. you card no I didn't get a thank you card unless you want to consider a thank you card in the form of people calling and saying hey we'll fulfill that purchase order for you but I didn't know you were located in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Yeah. How could that go badly? No, not at all. Okay, now another thing. Uh, DDR5 has finally been kind of uh, demoed. Kind by, of demoed. <laughs> kind of demoed. Kind. Well, it, because it's super early. It was like demoed on like a little like breadboard thing. Do you think, though, that the reason why it's only been revealed a little bit because they feel a little embarrassed that the DDR4 hasn't even really matured yet and they're already like, okay, DDR5? But Cadence and Micron demo. They've, it was, I found it on the Cadence blog. They actually were talking about the demo they did. It was at 4,400 megahertz and mega transfers uh, at CL42. Jeez. 4,400 megahertz, that's 42. Awesome. But CL42, it's like, holy hell. I mean, that's like, but the thing is, I will tell you that there is a calculation in there where, and I actually wrote it up when I was working with Chad on some like insight on, uh, on some memory performance. And there is actually a calculation in place where you get so much bandwidth that the latency is actually offset by that. But the problem I have is, like you said, even dual channel setups, it's hard to find anything that'll tax that kind of performance. 
So if you, you know, we're going deep, we're looking at DDR5, which is looking to be implemented in 2019. JDIC voltage is supposedly so far 1.1 volts, which means it's going lower, which means the overall, uh, the overall IC, uh, the overall IC like thermal dump is going to be extremely low. Right. But it's already really low. And what do we use that would really tax that? I mean, I know there's some like, you know, oil, gas operation, things like that, where potentially you'll get a lot of throughput. But do you really feel we need this kind of this kind of implementation already? I feel like we're know, years dude. away from needing we're from actually fully exploring what DDR4 can do. Not at all. It's like let's come out with a different PCI Express interface again above 3.0. Like even when they went from 2.0 to 3.0, it was a little bit of a stretch after they released a, a few pertinent details about it that made sense. Yeah. Let's go to four, and then let's not stop at four. Let's go to five. Like we. That's something that still uh, had always baffled my dad when I would have a conversation with him about it because they're not even fully taking advantage and saturating the bandwidth of technology that exists today. And it's, it's completely opposite. It's rather than make sure that you use all the bandwidth you have, let's just keep increasing the size of the bandwidth and the bottleneck remains kind of constant in ratio. It would be similar to, you know, we don't have a lot of traffic here, at least in my opinion, compared to living in LA. So widen and the roads. Well, yeah, let's widen the roads, even though we have no traffic. It's like, we have four lanes, and two of them are congested. The rest are all fine. But you know what? Let's put six lanes because it's like reasons. If, it's kind of like if you, if you build it, they'll come. Like, if we widen the lanes, people are going to take notice that the lanes are wider, so more cars are going to show up. And the more cars show up, they're like, all right, it's not big enough. Let's just keep doing it. Because that logic makes sense. You know, it's unshakable. Just, uh, you know, just keep building it out. It, it feels more or less like it's the industry and manufacturers. Just, it's, a, it's a race. So look what I can do. It's just... And now we have DDR5. You're talking we're, the EPIN thing. like Yes. But I mean, that, and that's one thing. They were bragging about the fact, that, or at least uh, they were announcing that uh, future could reach over 6,400 megahertz, megatransfers, however they want to call it. JDEC uh, is not finalized for this. So it's kind, of a, it's kind of an up in the air thing still as far as the overall spec. But it is something that definitely could be interesting. But I'm just wondering, how is it actually going to be usable? How is it actually, how are you going to see benefits from it? Well, I mean, there's applications out there that take advantage of, of fast RAMs. So, yeah, but Photoshop, fast ra- fast, Photoshop, for example. Fast RAMs, but fa- fast RAMs. <laughs> Why do you do this? You, you just made me derp out. Like, seriously. That's good. Pla- I planted that seed All and, the grew, RAMs. and you grew into a beautiful flower. All the RAMs. Are belong to us. Yeah. So, when, and I, I think there will always be an application for memory, especially when you're doing things that, that rely heavily in computing. Uh, design, a lot of. Um, Educational institutes I work with will do uh, things that are based on computational data or like protein folding and things like that that, that simulate molecule growth and progression. And that will re- use high-speed memory to a degree. But does, mean, it actually, gaming. does it actually saturate the bus, though? Because right now, I'm running into a point to where you simply can't saturate the RAM. You can't use enough data. Unless you're doing, like, I could see this being advantageous to, like, the... Uh, to like SQL servers, things like that, where all of your data is in the RAM. Right. So I could see that where those really fast transactions could be advantageous, but sure. to, what, to what end? To no end, apparently. They're just gonna keep making things that can potentially go faster, but just don't. No, Gordon, the roads are not bigger in Ohio. The, uh, that would be Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. Have you seen the potholes here at all? Have the potholes been? are bigger in Ohio. Dude. Abs- absolutely. There's, there's new potholes. Potholes have potholes. Here in areas, it's I'm, it's so bad. That you have communities that are people are just pitching in and filling the potholes themselves because their tax dollars aren't doing it. I feel like some of the potholes are scared of the other potholes. Like literally, it's like, oh my god, that's gonna hurt me. Because I know my wheels are scared of it, but and people, you might as well just fill the potholes with sand. <laughs> I think they do actually. <laughs> one time, I one time I saw a truck go over it, not just like bleh, just like obliterated. I'm like, okay, <laughs> just see a car disappear to the street. And you're like, I'm gonna take this road. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to stop at the store real quick. It's pretty bad when you consider the dangerous part of the neighborhood is actually just because giant potholes, not because it's like dangerous as far as like possible gang activity or something like that. It's like, it's like, oh, this is a dangerous part of the neighborhood. Well, why is it? Oh, no, 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 but not because of drugs and gangs. You just don't want your car to fall in a hole. Right. If you value your car, skip the next town. Take yeah. the highway. You don't want oh, your highway to pot- explode. The highway is potholes too. Just drive on the shoulder. Let's just fly. <laughs> I mean, Ohio, hey, Ohio, I will give this. Ohio is the perfect, perfect representation of why we need flying cars because there's no potholes in air. What was it? 20, 2015 was the year in Back to the Future 2 where cars were supposed to have wheels that turn sideways, hover, and fly. And I blame Michael J. Fox. He lied to us. I don't think he lied to us. Steven Spielberg's just his fault for that, too. He lied to us. Doc Brown. He should have been like all over this. 
Or how do you know that because of what they did that they didn't alter the turn of events to where now we don't have flying cars and we should have? So I still blame them because they did it. I guess. They were, you know, they didn't know any better. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, now let's see. 50 Minecraft servers. Um, 50 next, Minecraft servers? I guess you could possibly take up the high RAM that way, or the high memory that way. Holy crap. Uh, 50 Minecraft servers, that would be rough. I mean, I run a Minecraft server. I can tell you that Mike, well, Ark server would also be a pain in the ass with that. With that, that would be insane. Yeah, it would be crazy. I think you'd probably only get probably three in before things just started pooping. Hey, I run three off of a nuck, dude. <laughs> three I off, run three off of a nuck. Off of a nuck. And the nuck's like, eh, but it works. Jeez, that poor nuck. Oh, yeah. No, there there needs to be nuck support groups. Oh, God. <laughs> Why is this happening? You did it. It's your fault. <laughs> So, next we want to talk about the potential for new GeForce cards. Uh, we see info popping up at places. Uh, someone supposedly did a GPU's out of Z validation, possibly, potentially, maybe, maybe not so much. The rumor mill is adjourning. Uh, all these specs may be false, may be real, probably false. I always treat uh, rumors with a huge grain of salt. Yeah, it's I, hit or miss. Just kind of a precursor, guys. We have no inside information on this, so please don't ask. None. I we know what you know. I don't want to have early information yet because then I can't talk about it like this on the show without possible impropriety and things like that. Yeah. That's why we're talking about it now before we potentially do hear about it. And then, you know, I get my ass in a lot of trouble because the next thing you know, I get, uh, I get talked to about, you know, sharing information we shouldn't be sharing via NDA. I'm kind of off the hook here. I can say whatever I want. They're going to talk to this guy. So. Great. Let's move on no to the next offense. topic. <laughs> um, we saw a lot of information out there, and it's and it looks pretty exciting if that actually happens. I mean, the total uh, gig flop performance, um, some of the stuff it's showing. I'm not. I'm just getting the flops, <laughs> flops, giga flops, giga floppy performance. Um, and now I've got to ask. You know, it's uh, 10 series has been very long in the tooth. We've it's been what? It's been over two years at this point. Might as well even call it a walrus. Like uh, so what you're saying is 10 series like ju just uh, just in long walrus though where he's just like ah! that's kind of what it feels like <laughs> well there you go so now why do you think all of a sudden because one of the things um what do you think about the fact that all of a sudden we're starting to see this crop up after we haven't seen any movement i mean people assume gdc obviously gtc wouldn't really be the right place for it because it's more a compute and AI based show. Sure, sure, yeah. So I mean, it's 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 a great resource to just kind of learn what different GPUs do. I mean, I went the one year in 2015, and you learn a lot about the way that GPUs can be utilized and how they put Nvidia puts a lot of power into developers' hands to really stretch what GPUs are capable of doing. It almost made me jealous because I wish some video game developing studios would go to that extent to do it, but they don't because, you know, consoles. <laughs> Not funny. It is. Take it seriously. I take, I take, I take the threat from consoles very seriously because, you know, they're, they're catching up with us being able to do our awesome visual fidelity on, a, on their uh, APUs. It's the entire reason as to why I wouldn't allow anybody to bring in a console into our game room. Uh, you do realize I'm bringing in a console, right? Nope. Yes, I am. Uh, if you want to see a rendition of Office Space's printers, Printer scene, please, by all means. I'll throw the cash down and then take it outside. I don't even care. Well, apparently we're going to be live streaming Joe paying me for a console. Awesome. Because this is going to be good stuff. I got my pistol pouring and cocked. You realize we're also setting up like HTC Vive in the new game room, right? That, that's great. And then we're going to stream you doing something as someone like just tries to screw with you. I can, I, but I want to do something like a simulator that's not meant for VR. Like there's um, the shower with your dad simulator. We can do that in VR. Can we just do Grass Simulator? We can do, we can do, we can do Goat Simulator. Dude, Goat Simulator is actually an amazing <laughs> game, to be honest. Could you, could you imagine, though, that instead of you being the goat, you were just the objects that the goat was licking, and just sitting in VR, just like, Bleh! just throw yourself into cars and stuff? I don't know about you guys, but I don't think about goats licking me, but okay. I didn't say goats licking me. Just imagine. I mean, by insinuating that you don't think about goats licking you, it kind of makes me feel like that you may have thought about goats licking you. Well, I, I, like to, I like to hide my feelings, Joe, and you're, you're exposing me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, Titan XXP with two terabytes of RAM. Uh, I really doubt that. But, however, we did see, I don't know if you saw that, um, speaking of cards with ridiculous amounts of, like, RAM storage, all that crap, they had a uh, AMD, like, Fire Pro card that had actual M... Uh, M.2 like SSDs built into it for crea creativity, which was really odd. That is pretty odd. I saw it. I Why? haven't seen it like physically yet, but uh, it was a real interesting concept. Okay, I mean, kind of scary. Concept, yes, good idea. 
Eh. Eh, Gordon, I don't want to really stream potentially deploying a RetroPie here because, you know, there's licensing things and being a business, you yeah, know, all that kind of stuff. I don't know about but that. I, I, Maybe you know, personally you never at home. Know. We can always do it at home, right? Haley brought up a good point, and this is actually pretty important. Rick and Morty was renewed. I have 70 more episodes. Because we need more Pickle Rick. I mean, Pickle Rick! I just, I really <laughs> hope that the content is there because there's, there's been a few cartoons in the past that get started. Like Metalocalypse used to be one of my favorite ones. And then you can tell that they started to just write episodes out of obligation. And then it just wasn't We got to get anymore. this done. It's like a checkbox. Yeah, just don't make it a checkbox. And I, and I have faith in the writers. I mean, that's, they took like, what, two years to come out with season three because they wanted it to be nice. And I admittedly, I haven't seen season three yet because I want to binge watch it. Yeah. But I have a lot of faith. And if they just sign 70 more episodes, that says something. I just need you to talk Ashley into actually watching it with me because that's the hardest part. Why, Why wouldn't she watch Rick and Morty with you? Because re uh, reasons. She, she, I don't know. She did. Peace Among Worlds? Peace Among Life. I mean, but then again, you know how it is having a wife. You can't just be like, you can't be like, yeah, you need to watch this. It's like, honey, can we watch this? I'm not saying I'm like a wuss, but at no, the same time, I like being married and not, you know, giving away half my stuff. Or half of, <laughs> of your life essence, because that would just be sucked dry in your sleep. So, but no, I get it. Because uh, there's, there's been times my wife has, stop it. There's been times, <laughs> my wife, there's been times I have tried to get my wife to watch things. And whether I ask her to or not, every, you know, she'll catch a glimpse of shows while I'm watching them. And she'll sit down and she'll watch one episode. And it's either going to be one episode to where she's like, you know, this actually isn't that bad. And she'll continue watching or she'll look at it and get up and while walking away, just go, stupid. And then that's it. Like, so it's, it's hit or miss. I, I stopped asking if we could get into shows. And then when I do get into a show that she's into, she suddenly just doesn't want to watch it anymore. So it's, it's whatever. Kind of like Final Fantasy? Yeah, that's my <laughs> fault. Sorry, honey. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us slightly back on topic here. So let's kind of steer this train back onto the track. Sure, because it's Because you can steer trains. It's so. being derailed right into a school bus, so. No, no, we just ran like right through a bus full of nuns or something. I'm not sure. Ooh. Whee. Ooh. Um, so why do you think like all of a sudden this is popping up? You think maybe the recent announcement Lisa had about, you know, uh, Vega coming out 7 nanometer, potentially pushing in that direction? They're, get, they're getting nervous. Okay. Guarantee so they're getting nervous. And I, I think mean, you know why. Well, yeah, because uh, we know about some of the foundry issues and things like that people have seen. So who knows, you know, what's coming down the pipe. I'm excited. I mean, all in all, competition is competition. Competition is great because that means people like you and I and people who buy our systems and everyone who builds their systems can now get stuff even better for the same price. Right. Oh, well, great. And Ashley's watching. So now, so now she's going to know, like, everything uh, she you said. has to watch Rick and Morty with me. That's, that's an obligation since I'm saying this. Oh, nothing like peer pressure. That's going to work wonders. Peer pressure? That's just called, that's called she needs to be a good wife. She needs to, <laughs> she needs to. Keep digging your hole, dude. Keep digging it. It's okay. I got a really comfortable couch or a really comfortable <laughs> truck. I'm not sure. She comfy couch. Or, or maybe go sleep on Joe's couch. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I mean, sure, as, you long, as long as you don't mind getting balls thrown at your face by a two-year-old girl, sure. Because <laughs> so, that's probably bound to happen. Um, recent post about uh, gaming and AI technology for uh, GTC Taiwan and Computex. We actually found a page where they were talking about that. And when you translate it, utilizing GPU computing to explore the world's infinite possibilities, witness the ultimate gaming experience and the power of artificial intelligence at Computex 2018. Now, some people are uh, extrapolating from that that, hey, they could potentially see a card launch at Computex. Well, the thing is, right before that, GTC Taiwan, what are you laughing at? Stop it. <laughs> Don't read the comments. Which comments? Don't read them. No, continue, please. By all means. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it, didn't you? Oh, Dan. Dan, I've got a story for you, buddy. Oh, boy. Um, GTC Taiwan, May 30th, right before Computex. We know GTC inherently has not really launched. I mean, they launched... They launch like, I don't want to say prosumer, they launch like, launch like professional cards, like Quadros. Right. Like they had just recently, when we were, um, when we had New York GTC, they had launched the uh, GV100. Badass, awesome card. But they do not normally launch that close to like GTC consumer cards. So if it's anything like 10 series, they're probably going to do some, some special event, kind of like what they did at Austin with the 10 series. Which would be cool. We've got to wait and see. But the thing is, I really feel like 10 series is getting too long in the tooth. I feel like they're due. They're due to really refresh this. They that, need to get new cards out. I hate to put it on AMD, but it's kind of their own fault. They just don't have the competition. But maybe, just maybe we'll see something else from a third contender next year. Well, I had saw a while back, like, a, a news report that said that Jensen literally said, like, Jensen from NVIDIA, the CEO of NVIDIA said, mm. you know, 
10 series is good enough. And like, you don't need to do something else. By and what standard? Because I have ridiculously high standards and no, the 10 series are not good I'm not enough. saying Give that's true. I couldn't, I couldn't actually find a source for it. But if they, they, this level of complacency we've seen before in the CPU market, and then it took Ryzen kicking them in the ass, and next thing you know, they start, look at, how, look at what happened. Overnight, all of a sudden, we start getting just blast of new we, awesome CPUs and come, overnight. And comes Coffee Lake that actually has some merit to its CPU performance and leading me to want to actually upgrade my PC for the first time in four years. So. You mean the first time they've jumped a core count on mainstream platform in our lifetime almost? And you know what it leads me to believe? That the fact they did it that quickly, they were just holding the card underneath the table like, oh, that, that's your hand. Whap! No, no, they just had it on hand. It was like, you know, it's like a... It's like when you, okay, perfect example was when I used to overclock like LN2 and whatnot, and a lot of people do this. Like when you're in a competition trying to do something, you may break a record, and then you may still be able to go further and further, but you don't submit those scores. You sandbag those. You wait. You hold on to them. And then as soon as someone like, hey, I beat you by two points, it's like, ha-ha, ten more. That was like Billy Mitchell with Donkey Kong, who is now no longer on the high scoreboards. Yeah, but he's a cheating bastard. He's like, yeah. he didn't, who Screw knows if any of those, <laughs> who knows if any of those were even real. I mean... It was, it was proven that some of those were done on ma like MAME cabinets, yeah, things was, like that. It was all emulators. Because yay, because you know, you can't do anything Ill illegitimate on something that you can pretty much write your own code for or anything like that. No, but I just, I, I remember back in the day that the competition between AMD and NVIDIA was so, it was so fierce that you were no longer angry about the fact that there wasn't great GPU tech. It was like, I just bought this sweet NVIDIA GPU. And then like months later, AMD releases one better and you're like, oh, what the hell? So you buy an AMD one if you're that guy and then NVIDIA releases another one six months later. It was like, it's not that your GPU wasn't relevant anymore. It's just new, awesome stuff kept coming out between both teams that you just either had to live with it or keep buying the new tech. And that, I, I honestly had to kind of double take when I saw and, and realized how long that 10 series has been out now. Because that's kind of unusual for cards, don't you think? Oh, yeah. There's usually new cards every year or every other year. Or at, at least some at sort least. of refresh along the way. No, nothing. It's just 10 AMD series. got really good at refreshing, by the way. I mean, that's kind of all they've had. They're, they're like, they've kind they're of like, like, here's the same GPU with a new name for the seventh time. It's like NVIDIA is the Iron Chef, and AMD is the guy that just buys things from the freezer and reheats things, or takes home what the Iron Chef cooks, and then just reheats it in the microwave and tries to pass it off as being the Iron Chef. Like, eh? Eh? They try, though. And they just, they just need to keep trying. Just keep, keep doing your thing. Please. Better graphics cards. Make uh, NVIDIA sweat. Please tell me you know who Levi, who Levi Howard is. No. Okay, well, they said they want to have Joe's babies, so. Okay, cool. And I think Levi Howard might be a guy, so this could be a very interesting relationship. I mean, I'm not sure how the mechanics of that you, work. You have to keep in mind that the only reason why my daughters are as cute as they are is because my wife is the one with the looks. They just have my attitude. So you just want to make sure I'm the only one that hasn't screwed myself with their wives, huh? I mean, no. I'm, I have, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have a horrible conversation after this live stream. I told you to keep digging the hole, and you were just like, the hole's not deep enough. Oh. I need you to join me to dig your own hole. I mean, I do that just by being myself, so it's bound to happen at some point. There will you, be, you are right. There will be point. something I've said in this live stream that I'm going to get chastised for. Believe you me, sir. Uh, but anyways, otherwise, if it were just, if I was like asexual, my kids would just look like Wookiees. <laughs> but I appreciate the compliment. So what you're saying is you can't produce your own humans by yourself. No, I'm not well, self-sufficient. Step up, son. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't know. Do I want to touch Dan's question about whether we're competing in the Intel Rig Challenge? No, I'll I, tell you. I'll tell you. I, what. I think we should tell them why we don't want to compete in the Intel Rig Challenge. Let's just be. Um, let's be open and honest about it. I think when it comes down to it, um, the Intel Rig Challenge has been fun. We've done it a few years. Um, this year, a lot of stuff changed. Um, you know what? Hell with it. Full transparency. Uh, some of the benefits that came with it, uh, some of the partners that were involved, not any of our, not any of our friends like you know, Main Gear, Origin, all that stuff. It did make sense. They, it, they are, they, you know, they're, they weren't a problem with it. I was more had to do with the politics, policies, and the overall. I don't even want to use the term ROI, but the overall benefit we'd get from it just wasn't there. And the thing is, we have you know finite resources. People like me and Joe, you know, we like to have fun and show off and do all kinds of cool stuff for you guys. If we had invested so much time into that, there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming up soon that we wouldn't have been able to do. So when it comes down to it, AVA Direct's in a very big growth period, and we, uh, we moved to a completely new building, really, I mean, huge building. We were able to build a studio in here. And had we done the investment strategically to enter the rig challenge, it might have compromised our ability to do some of the cool stuff we have coming up or even delayed it in a large margin. Because at the end of the day, guys, um we, we do the best that we can to bring awareness that we're a company that even exists because we 
kind of like zim- similar to what Arizona IC does, the CEO of Arizona IC, uh, they don't put any money into their advertising. They, they put their money into their customers, their investments into their customers and let their products speak for themselves. And that's what we are big, I mean, huge proponent of. And we just kind of felt like the way the Intel rig challenge was working is it was designed to be more marketing and less about uh, introducing your products into the world. I mean, um, that's no slight against our competitors. You know, we met with our competitors at the last PAX and great group of guys, really happy to, to have met a lot of them and, and to, to share some words and experiences. It just, it didn't feel like it was for us. It didn't feel right. We were- This time, it did. Yeah, last this, time? this time it did not. And we really hope that uh, based on the trend that it's been going with the Intel rig challenge, that they try different things every year. And if next year is a great fit for us, then by all means. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll participate. We're always going to do things where we can do really cool stuff, but we'll never enter something where our hands are potentially tied or we're put in a position where we're not going to be able to make the coolest thing for you guys. Right, or compromise what we want to stand for. Yeah, we, we, we I don't want to say, I don't want to bring up like morality, but as a company, we do we do really believe in making the best thing possible for people. And we, we stand behind that, which is why guys like me and Joe work here. Yeah. We, want to, we want to build really cool stuff. We want to build something that's fun for us to do because if it's fun for us, you guys are going to enjoy it too. Right. Like our, typically, our quality standards are here and, and working under the under the umbrella of AVA, our standards have to be here because that's we need to push ourselves to achieve a, a further progress of greatness than we have already. That's kind of the great thing about life, right? You just push yourself to grow. Okay, so... I think, I think we've answered that question. So now it comes down to some more funny stuff. Uh, Could you please read what Travis said? I'm, I'm scared. Can you oh. see it? Ree! <laughs> <laughs> that just popped up in there because reasons. So yeah. that's something we hear regularly through our production. We actually have a lot of fun working here. Besides, I mean, literally, if you guys are watching us here, this is kind of how me and Joe, this is not like an act. This is no. This is actually kind of toned down for what we do, but we do try to give you guys kind of the full experience of what it's like to actually be here with us. Yeah, and, and, and we try to keep it in a more appropriate manner. Maybe you. <laughs> so we you know just that keep you digging d- the holes. Just keep digging them. Alex, Alex, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Alex, I don't know, or Shannon, I don't know if you could fit in two holes, Torso bro. Torso twist. <laughs> my watch did it too and now it's your turn go ahead <laughs> no I'm good feel free so, so now we're going to bring up yet another unpopular topic because apparently we want to piss everyone off today so GPP something we've avoided talking about it is a fantastic program let us tell you let me tell you first of all I don't have a contract about this nope I was not approached about it nope I have no background information I only have the conjecture and everything else that was out there all of the assumptions or what supposedly was it, what it was. If it is what it was, I've got some questions about it. First of all, we'll go, um, as you can see, recently released NVIDIA blog post. NVIDIA kind of jumped into the, we were trying to do something really cool for you guys and you all screwed it up. It's your fault. All of you it's screwed your, it up for your, wanting to know what it was about. It's your fault, guys, because you asked too many questions and... Uh, you know, it, like, was a, it was a great thing. You should have just but believed th- admittedly, it. Admittedly, they did ask tough questions, Joe, like, what is this? And that's a hard question to answer. What makes it easier for us to have choice? Well, Why won't anybody talk about it? Joe, 1066 gig and 3 gig, man. You got choice. You got 6 gig and 3 gig. That's all the only difference, right? No. At the end of the day, what happens in GPP stays in GPP. <laughs> but and the first rule of GPP <laughs> is you don't talk about GPP. <laughs> Well, that may be true, but I will tell you that, uh, that that was actually the stance taken in a lot of cases, and I've actually watched other reports about it where people have been stonewalled, and it's really tough because I've heard some, I've heard some, uh, I've heard some rumors about things. I've heard a lot of things, and you know what? Some of it was troubling. Some of it, I would ask the question, why do we care? Because, like, qu- okay, let's say, just for example, let's say, and this is, let me, let me give a little bit of pre- uh, pretense or a little bit of context to this. Let's say that everything they said was true, all the reporting where it says, hey, they want to take control of, let's just hypothetically, let's say, let's say we were a card manufacturer and we had right. AVA Gaming. Mm-hmm. And they said, we want AVA Gaming cards to only be um, NVIDIA-based graphics cards. And we said, fine, you know right. what? We're going to make AVA R series. Mm-hmm. And now you sell it under that. Do they, does anyone, I, I guess maybe this might be caught up in the whole pitchfork thing because does anyone really feel that this would be such a huge market hit that if, Theoretically, AVA Gaming or whatever the other gaming brand w- was actually taken over, if that was actually the context that this was done, does anyone feel like that would actually truly affect AMD to such a way that people who would normally buy or go look at a Radeon GPU 
would would not buy that just because it doesn't have that name? Uh, I think I'll, I think a lot of it was done in theory because let's say if you have one PC gamer talking to somebody who's just starting out building a PC because I I've known a few people uh, personally uh, within my network of, of friends that wanted to build a PC for their first time and they they have no clue like what do I get? Here's my budget and they were kind of banking on a situation where it's like oh dude you got to look at ROG cards or you have to look at the Aorus cards like those are the best and now that immediately limits you to Nvidia cards or as consumers, we tend to associate certain names or brands with a certain level of quality. And what they were trying to do is, I think, associate that. Like, ROG is where it's at for Asus cards, and Aorus is where it's at for Gigabyte. And if you can't have that under your Geisel, then it's not quality, because nothing beats an ROG, and nothing beats a Strix. And, and see, that's where that's where I wonder how much, maybe I don't have the metrics for that, maybe that brand attachment is there at such a level to where it would be detrimental? It's got, I, I, I do get, a few people that are highly interested in those cards, and you're always gonna have individuals that are particular in what they want. That's why AVA Direct is here. You pick exactly what you want, how you want it, and we're not gonna argue with you. Uh, if there's any longer lead times on any of these items, we let people know so they're aware, and you'll have people that, ah, Strix isn't important, I can, I can go with this card. And then you have the people who are like, no, I will wait until the end of time for this card, so help me. And that's, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, you do have people with that attachment, but I think most people, they're, they're like, hey, you know what? I want a gaming card, I want a card that's good for gaming. And I, you know, maybe some of them can't do the research, so maybe it's just a matter of that. I don't know. And sure. honestly, that I just wanted to bring it up because is it really dead? I don't know. But I, no. I really wonder would it would would it, if it if it was truly, and who knows what other things might have been involved. Right. But I I just kept kept telling myself, and maybe it's because we know so much about the hardware, that I just looked at it and go, I don't care. I'm gonna grab whatever card makes sense for me. And dude, it's as simple as that old saying that uh Th good things in life are worth fighting for. So if GPP really was that great, why would NVIDIA just give up? Like, we're not going to battle mistruths or rumors. We're just going to kill it dead. Well, my question would be, and this is this is actually a good point brought up. Okay. Uh, Stephen Burke brought this up, and it was something that I thought was actually very well, or coined very well, mm -hmm. was, and I, I can't remember who else brought it up, but he said, if it's so good, why is nobody talking about it? Right. Like, why, and, and why, right. wouldn't they, why wouldn't they be he's shouting from, why wouldn't they be like, hey, you know what? When they're like, hey, what is this? They'd be like, hell yeah, you were doing this, this, and this. People and this. should be pumped. You should have people doing live streams like this, and while they're talking about GPP, you have like acrobats in the background doing backflips and green jumpsuits and like green lights flashing everywhere to talk about the GPP. But they're not down with GPP, and you don't know <laughs> that, me. That damn reference. Okay. I mean, they could, they could have done some really fun stuff with GPP too. Like, say GPP five times fast. GPP, 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 GPP. Ah, I'm like, I almost bit my tongue thing. <laughs> Okay. And that's ironic. I, do you, I just feel like, I just feel like, what is it, Alanis Morissette song? You got a GPP in your going, going in your living room. Help me, please. <laughs> Anyone watching this, come break me out of this, please. No, you're stuck forever. Okay, new Intel GPU. We know that a lot of uh, heavy hitters have uh, joined uh, Intel recently, and they're very graphics focused. We have Chris Hook. Raja and the biggest one I would say would probably be Jim Keller as he has a long he has a he has a long experience going all the way back to Athlon 64 days. He was involved in some of the initial Zen and then uh, he went over to Tesla to do some of their auto driving. Great job on that, by the way, Jim. <laughs> Your cars are running people over. Cool stuff. So <laughs> So basically, what we've got to worry about is Intel. It's okay. No big deal. I'm sure they're covering the medical costs. So what's going to happen is you're going to be running people over in your games now. Cool. Yeah, fine. Okay. So is that what we're looking at for Intel? Because if they, and they, okay, we actually, we actually. I just did that last that. night on PUBG. I ran over Zach with my, with my jet ski. But you can do it better with an Intel GPU. Good. Sign me up. <laughs> no, we we don't know a lot about this. It's it's all theoretical. It could potentially be, as we saw rumors of possibly CES 2019 showing something. Sure. I mean, but, I hope which so. Will be, like... will be there. But my question being. Are they really trying to enter the crowded gaming market? And I call it crowded because there's so, there's 300,000 SKUs between the two companies. At, th at this point, honestly, I think they're just, people want to see a contender with NVIDIA because there is no contender. Like, it's great at, at a certain point. And this is, again, no slight to NVIDIA whatsoever. It is awesome that they've found something that works for them and for everybody. And they're rising to the occasion and, and they're growing in market share. But... I work in marketing. You're not supposed to be doing these puns, damn it. I'm just saying. <laughs> pun, 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 fun. <laughs> The problem I have here I need a piece of paper. Is, is that you, you get stagnant <laughs> after a while, okay? Like, after you start to see, it's kind of like, you, you have, like, Floyd Mayweather. Like, that guy was just the king of boxing. And after a while, people started like, okay, it's great. You're awesome. You're one of the best boxers of our time. 
But when's somebody else going to walk in? I think that's why the, the, the McGregor and, and Mayweather fight was so exciting because they're like, oh, man, you have the chance of bringing somebody down from being the king of the mountain. We, we want to see that with NVIDIA to some degree. Like, bring somebody in. Bring in a no-name. Just someone, man. Like, and that's Voodoo FX. Here comes Voodoo FX from the ashes. The ghoul. Please like, no. I'm not, let's, let's, a, re, let's get 3D FX going again. <laughs> just an example. <laughs> that I, I want to see video card manufacturers battle to the performance of death. What right? are we going to do? Drop like, we're going to be like, here's the $6 billion the industry is. Fight for it. Just throw them all like a stick. <laughs> just, just throw money in the middle of a room and light it on fire and give everybody a bucket of water. <laughs> no, just give, See each, what give each of them a cast iron pan and drop all that money in the middle of the room and go, go for it. You have turns. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Could you, I just want the audio from that, by the way. I want the audio of like 50 people in a room. Oh, no, five-minute warning. Five-minute warning. And then with, well, we might with go over by pants, a minute. With pants, pink, 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 pink. That's what I want. Okay, so with that, we don't even know if it's going to be gaming. And that's something Dan brought up. And actually what I was leading to is that these could, they could potentially be going where, quote unquote, air quote, the money's at. They could be going after like data center and things like that, like actual processing cards where you've right. seen like where Xeon Phi was as a card solution. Then it became Knight's Landing as those large, basically billion atom cores on a single chip. That kind of crap. It could actually be that and it could never even see the light of day as far as a actual gaming GPU, but the fact that they hired Chris Hook, who is a very prominent figure in uh, promoting like gaming graphics, I feel like that is a strong indicator in my mind that they plan to approach that market since he knows it very well. And if they do, I, I, wish, him, so. I wish him the best of luck because you know what? We, de we direly need more competition in GPU technology because there's no reason that we shouldn't be moving faster. No. There's no reason we shouldn't be pushing, we shouldn't be pushing the needle. Instead, we're, we're becoming complacent just like the CPU market did and I want to see this complacency go away. So not only I get better graphics cards, all of you do. All of you guys, you know. You, you get a order, graphics card, <laughs> you get a graphics card, you, you can get order a graphics more, card. You can order more badass graphics cards. You can get them at a better price because there's going to be more options, which right. means now instead of paying what was it recently? Thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars for a damn 1080 Ti. Uh, some places it was like for ten fifty. Some people were reselling them for fifteen hundred every now and then. I'm getting a migraine. I know, right? It's, uh, I was. You know, I'm still hoping that Nvidia is not going to take advantage of the situation. I mean, there, there was an article that they released recently that was like, "Hey, prices are near original MSRP, so we're kind of making some headway here." But I really hope that the new cards don't take advantage of that price point. Like, well, you guys are kind of used to paying thousand dollars for the, the the X80 series, so here's a thousand and five dollars. It's a little cheaper. Like, don't come on, stop. It's insulting. You're just gonna piss people off. But see, it also comes down to the same argument where I've got to stand on both sides of the fence of this, which is like gaming. Oh, everyone says, oh, gaming's games so expensive, but games have been sixty dollars since we were kids, right? And yet the price never went up. No. And the entertainment value you get for sometimes hours and hours and hours, endless hours of gameplay, reality. You go to a movie, you get two hours of you get two hours of it, enjoyment, and for I don't know, once you get a popcorn and soda, it's like three thousand dollars, I think. A popcorn, just one a popcorn? popcorn. A popcorn, a single kernel. <laughs> just a corn. It's kind of like going to Disneyland. I would at this like point. a basket of popcorns, please. If you have a family and you go to Disneyland, you have to like take out a second mortgage at this point. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. But I mean, at the end of the day... <sighs> We've got one more topic I really think we should touch on, and it's actually a sneak peek for you guys. Uh, we have a new awesome gaming bundle coming through for, from our friends at Intel. So actually two gaming bundles. One we talked about last week, the VR one, where me and Joe, hell yeah, are going to be playing like Arizona Sunshine and other things that probably will make us look ridiculous, and hopefully no one will like come up and scare us and I end up doing... like yelling inappropriate things, which will happen anyway, especially watching us play PUBG. Yes. But this is not a VR bundle, and you're really creeping me out. What's the other bundle, Shannon? Please, tell us. <laughs> Jesus. First, uh, qualifying CPUs. Uh, you can get uh, a two-game bundle, Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition, and I'm just not going to look at Joe because reasons. And Warhammer Vermin... T Vermin... Vermin... V -V 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 -V. By the way, it's Final Fantasy XV, but I call it 15 because Roman numerals are hard. Just for you. And uh, Warhammer Vermintide is two, but it's II because Roman numerals are hard again. And qualifying devices. So basically, any system we sell that has any of these listed processors... And I'm going to go through a list because I actually wrote myself a little script to know exactly what it was. Don't do it. I7-8700K. I already started too late i7 7740X, which is going EOL, so yay. Um, i7 7800X, 7820X, 
And then you got your i9, 7900, 7920, 7940, 7960, 7980 XE. So if you got $2,000 spent on a processor, you can get a free $60 game. Hey, great value. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, then again, if you buy it a 7, is, 8, it's an awesome value. The you games buy, are awesome. If you buy a 7980 XE to play Final Fantasy 15, then we probably you probably should call our sales department. And we can find you a much. You can talk to someone like Joe, and he'll find you a much more suitable system. I for will that. make the sting feel less painful. Yeah, like something around a $300 processor versus a $1,500 or $2,000 processor. Something that's a little bit more reasonable for gaming. And, and I basically asked somebody a very important question: Is like, are you do you want this processor just to say that you want it? Or are you buying it under the impression that you really feel like? It's gonna help your gaming experience. And depending on what your answer is, I'll, I'll get you the right fit. Simple as that. But I'm never but, gonna say, but Joe, you need Joe. 16 cores to play The Sims 3, but David. Joe, Joe, extreme mega tasking. Marketing, hashtag marketing. Ooh, all the cores. And by the way, effective date. You're gonna be able to find this for us uh, May 15th. So coming up uh, next Tuesday, and it'll be running through July 31st. So you can get, if you're looking forward to that newest Final Fantasy game. Um, I Wait, will no longer. I will admit, I'm excited to play it. Joe pre-ordered it. I am I, too. I'm still playing Wolfenstein 2, though. You're playing PUBG. What are you talking about? Yeah, I try to play. And we're going to be VRing some stuff here pretty quick because uh, we got to stream. We got to stream so these guys can make fun of us on that, not just sitting here talking. Yep, we stream. But uh, on that on that note, I think that's everything we have for today, Shannon. Unless there's anything else you think you could add. Uh, yeah, I can add it. You know, hey, a thank you to you guys. Thank you for joining us. This yes, is thank our, you very much. This is our third live stream every Friday now. We've got a pretty set schedule. We are still working on our. Uh, on our studio here, but yes. we will be here as uh, baby steps. We'll be as judicious as possible about being on time, not guaranteeing it because me and him are both uh, bad about punctuality. But we will be here for you every Friday at around two thirty Eastern time. I say around because that gives me the leeway to be late and not get you pissed at me. Hopefully, um, other than that, guys, thank you very much. Please join us next time. We will be uploading this to our YouTube, and it'll be able to preview it on Facebook as soon as it uploads. Whenever that happens, I don't know. Bookface does weird things. Otherwise, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank Bye. you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice weekend.